Yes. Okay, good. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto Pieraccini, and I am uh, the leader of the, uh, I'm leading the uh, conversational, advanced conversational technologies at Jibo. So I, my team is doing everything that we need to do to make Jibo converse, to make Jibo talk, listen, and understand speech, and understand who is talking. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. Um, I have been for more than 35 years in um, building machines that understand speech. Uh, I started in the early 80s. Uh, I built my first speech recognizer uh, when the only computer available was a PDP-11 uh, and 16-bit uh, uh, of addressable memory and the larger disk at the time was seven megabytes, you can imagine, seven megabytes. Uh, so I built a real-time system there, I was in Italy. Then I moved to the United States. I worked at Bell Laboratories uh, in one of the uh, most prestigious research centers for speech recognition. I worked with Larry Rabiner, who wrote many books and is one of the uh, fathers of modern speech recognition. And then I uh, worked at a company called Speechworks you might remember, some of you might remember the company. The company is today called Nuance. It's one of the largest providers of uh, engines for speech recognition and professional services. And then after that, I worked at IBM uh, Research, still in uh, conversational technologies. Then I was the CTO of a company called Speech Cycle. We built large applications for customer care, those systems that you happen to find on the telephone when you try to call for technical support, a, a company like a, an internet provider or a cable company. And then after that, I was directing a research center in Berkeley, connected to the University of Berkeley. And then at the uh, beginning of 2014, I joined Jibo. So uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, what we do in conversational technologies um, and what are the conversational technologies uh, for Jibo. Uh, and a bunch of them, uh, I will start with hot word detection. So Jibo responds to hot word. Uh, Jibo does not have buttons to push when you want to start. And today, the, the, the trend is to use a hot word. And the hot word for Jibo is, hey Jibo. So when you say, hey Jibo, Hey, Jibo uh, um, knows that you're talking to, to him, and he does a number of things. One of them is turns toward you. So there's a technology called sound source localization, and it's done in virtue of six microphones, which are around the head of Jibo. And the six microphones use algorithms for detecting where the sound comes from. So Jibo can turn to you when you say, hey, Jibo. Uh, it can also recognize your voice, who you are. Uh, when you install Jibo, you will have to do to go to a, a short enrollment session where Jibo learns about your voice. So once uh, uh, and you have to say a few times and say the, the, the phrase "Hey Jibo" a few times. So uh, if you do that, Jibo will be able to recognize your voice. And any time you say "Hey Jibo," uh, it will know if it's John, Mary, Adam, or Roberto. Uh, then uh, this is called speaker identification. Uh, uh, then we do speech recognition. So after you say, hey, Jibo, everything you say after that is streamed to a cloud recognizer, a large recognizer that understands hundreds of thousands of words. And uh, speech is transcribed into text. And the text is sent back to Jibo for further processing. And this is, in particular, is what we call natural language understanding. And natural language, and natural language understanding trying to extract, to extract concepts from the, the string of text. And these con, con, uh, concepts could be the intent, what you want to do, and other things like uh, uh, modifiers of the intent. So if, if you say, how is the weather tomorrow in San Francisco? The intent is knowing about the weather. Uh, tomorrow is a date and San Francisco is the location. So that's a natural language understanding. And finally, Jibo needs to respond to you back using speech. So 
So we use text to speech. So it's a total opposite process. We go from text to speech, and Jimbo talks with his own voice. So having said that, I would like to open the floor to uh, uh, questions. Um, and um, yeah, absolutely. So, and I think you you may have some other slides prepared on some of these subjects. Um, yeah. But I know one or one broad one we have is kind of what is. Why is designing and building for speech challenging in the broad sense? What, what, are, what are some of the, yeah. what makes uh, that? Yeah, so <laughs> I, I do a little commercial here. I will refer you to my book called The Voice in the Machine. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. So it, it, it uh, talks about the history. And it's not uh, by chance that the history of speech recognition is more than six, 60 years old. Uh, people started to try to do speech recognition in the 50, 1950s. And it was only today that we started seeing uh, applications that can use a full range of speech uh, products. Why is that challenging? It's challenging because speech is a very complex phenomenon. Uh, even we as humans, it takes a while before we, we start understanding speech. But our brain is somehow uh, wired for that. Why is it complex? Because there is a lot of variability. Every, everyone's voice is different. The way we talk is different. The, the words we use is different. Uh, the, the way we, uh, we uh, uh, express a concept can be different from, from person to person. And words can mean many things. Think, for instance, the word bank. It has many, 25 different meanings. Uh, it could be a verb. It could be a noun. It could be the bank of a reader. It could be a place where, where we uh, uh, put money and so on. So that's why speech is difficult. And speech is a... Com it, it, the, the phenomenon of speech is so complex that we need to deal with it in a statistical sense. So most of the speech technology, both for understanding speech and talking like this speech, are using uh, very powerful machine, statistical machine learning technologies. All right, we have one other question here. Um, is it possible that Jivo could use existing TTS systems that are commercially available and completed rather than continuing to build one from scratch? Um, when it comes down to launch uh, and the voice is not perfect, will Jivo still launch and wait for the voice to get better over time? Uh, or will you consider to use other available voices? Um, so, yeah, um, thanks. It's a good question. We started a uh, uh, long time ago to uh, look at uh, what the voice of Jivo would be. And you have to understand that the voice of Jibo is the hallmark of Jibo's personality, of Jibo's character. So we cannot just really use any voice. We wanted to specifically use a voice for a character that is, uh, talks in a human way, but is not human. Uh, we wanted to give that feeling. So we really worked a lot. And uh, it's not that building text-to-speech is not what keeping us from, uh, uh, from launching is that, that we uh, wanted to have uh, the perfect voice for the character. We went through a number of iterations. I will play for you a couple of uh, clips of uh, the evolution of Jibo's voice in time from roughly two years ago when we started using uh, some standard algorithms and standard uh, corpora, uh, and I will tell you in a minute what corpus is. So this is the first, the very first voice. It made me a little nervous. I play it again. It made me a little nervous. I hope you'll be able to hear it. So uh, how do we build a voice for Jibo? We have first to record a um, large number of utterances from a voice talent. We had to choose a voice talent uh, uh, whose voice characteristics were close to the target voice for Jibo. And we chose one, and uh, so the next clip I'm gonna play is the actual voice of this voice style. It was a human voice, a recorded human voice. It made me a little nervous. So it is a human. Uh, and actually we have a name, the name is Griffin. Uh, that was the, rec the, the voice we recorded. Um, so once we had this recording, a large number, tens of thousands of recordings, uh, we use these recordings to build statistical models using uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. And this is the, the voice that derived from those recordings. And, and uh, uh, this is an automated voice, it's text to speech. It made me a little nervous. So you see, it's still robotics. There is still a, a, the quality of the voice is not great. So we kept working on that. 
and in order to improve the voice. And after a while, we obtained another voice which it was more natural. Uh, and uh, this is an example. It made me a little nervous. Okay, so um, it is still not perfect. Probably you can't hear uh, the acoustic is not good uh, in in this uh, uh, in in this um, webcast, but. We were not happy about that for two reasons. One, the acoustic was not great. There is still some buzzing and clipping, some artifacts in the voice. And also, it doesn't have emotion. So um, emotion is a very important thing uh, for a voice uh, because it can convey all, uh, many more things than just the words. So in order to reduce the artifacts, we uh, changed some of the algorithms. So this is an example of the better voice. It made me a little nervous. And also we changed the pitch in order to make it sound more um, more young. So Jibo is not an adult, it's more like a, like a young child. So if you can hear the difference between the previous one. It made me a little nervous. And the second one. It made me a little nervous. It's a little bit younger. And finally we added uh, emotion. So now we have tools that allow us to express all range of emotions, either uh, pre-built, so we will come up with a number of pre-built emotions, but also you can, uh, a developer can change uh, 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 parameters like the fundamental frequency and duration of every word in order to make it sound better. And I'll play for you an example of uh, emotional speech and you see uh, uh, the difference. So I'll play again the last one, this non-emotional. It made me a little nervous. And you see this one. It made me a little nervous. So you see the longer duration of the word little introduce some expressivity and emotion in the voice. And I, I, I can say that we are quite happy. This is probably going to be, most likely going to be the voice that we'll use for Gbot launch. More we, questions? Yeah. Yeah, we have another question here. Um, in reference to the unacceptable latency that was referenced from uh, Gbo CEO Steve Chambers back in the November update yeah. we sent, um, specifically relating to the NLU and TTS latency. Uh, they're asking what, what work has been done to solve it uh, that makes the user experience feel, feel natural. Yeah. I, I would say that uh, we worked a lot on that latency. It was one of the main focus on the past uh, months. And um, often the, the latency is not just attributable to only one element. It may look like the natural language was, uh, 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 took a while, it was not a natural language of speech per se, but it was the integration of this technology with the rest of Jibo. Jibo is a very complex uh, machine, both from the hardware and software point of view. So uh, you can imagine that Jibo does many, many things at the same time. So uh, Jibo talks, Jibo is trying to understand speech, Jibo uh, uh, animates. So there are animations going on, there are three motors, and these motors are controlled continuously. There are two cameras which are controlled con continuously. Jibo tracks uh, human faces, it tracks people around and tries to recognize faces. So all these things contribute to the latency. Uh, we uh, came a long way from last November. Now we believe the lat latency is acceptable and is pretty much the state of the art that we can get for uh, with the current technologies uh, and comparable to other uh, devices uh, that you might be familiar with. Next question. All right, we have a question about uh, timing animations to correspond with accompanying TTS. So that's challenging. I, I know you can make TTS begin at a specified point in an animation using a start on event decorator, but is there a way to know how many milliseconds Jibo will take to speak the te text in TTS? If not, I think it would be a very useful addition to the SDK, i.e. a TTS box or a MIM announcement have a display that shows how long Jibo will take to speak the TTS, including lag. Yeah, uh, we have that. Uh, and actually, uh, today's TTS allow you to uh, know in advance the exact timing of every word and every sound that will be spoken. So you can really uh, do that in advance and you can synchronize your animations with that. So that's available. It's an available feature of TTS. Are there 
other embedded listening rules anticipated to be included in addition to Hey Jiba? Uh, in, potentially we could. We don't think we will, uh, at least for the first version. Uh, technologically, there is not a limitation. You have to understand, though, that it's not something easy to do, not something that a developer could do to add a new, uh, a new uh, embedded phrase spotter. That's how we call it in our, in our uh, jargon. Uh, because that requires a lot of tuning, and that requires a collection of a lot of data and tuning of the data. So for HeyJibo, we collected thousands of examples of HeyJibo spoken by different people at different distance from Jibo in different situations of noise and, and, and silence uh, and we use a, a, a special set of algorithms that allow to tune and have Jibo uh, understand. We have to do that for every phrase, so it's not something that we will intend to do before, uh, at least for launch. Okay, next question. Uh, when developing content to be spoken or speech rules, how can we determine what words or sounds are supported? Following that, how can we teach or inform Jibo how to recognize or speak these unsupported words or sounds? Okay, uh, Jibo uh, recognizes uh, the, 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 the speech to text. They, they recognize, large recognizer running in the, uh, in the cloud, recognizes hundreds of thousands of words. Uh, so there is a good chance that most of the words that you're going to use are recognized. I, I want to give you a, an a, a anecdote about that that happened to me recently. And uh, this is actually something that uh, surprises me too. You probably know there is a chain of stores, and they opened one in Boston recently called Italy, spelled E-A-T-A-L-Y. Uh, and one of our QA uh, engineers was testing Jibo and asked, um, what is the capital of Italy? He is not uh, from, uh, from the US originally, so he didn't say Italy, he said Italy. And Jibo came back with the name of the store, Italy, E-A-T-A-L-Y. So I was surprised because I didn't know that this word was in the vocabulary. So the, there are good chances that any word you might think of, especially of the English language, is there. Uh, some names might not be there, names that are not common names, common, common proper names may not be there. And uh, they can be added, but it's something that we have to do here. So I suspect... Uh, we will provide support for that in the future for developers. They, there is a word that uh, is consistently not recognized. Uh, then we can back, come back, can, uh, come back to us, and we will uh, see why, and if necessary, we'll add that word to the vocabulary. How about accents? How are accents interpreted by Jibo? Uh, do I have an accent? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a very old. It's not just by Jibo. It's, uh, it's a very old problem of speech recognition. Uh, today's speech recognizers are very good unless your accent is very, very, very thick. They're probably not understandable from other um, um, humans too. So the way it is done uh, is by, um, uh, you know, speech recognizers are based on statistical models of acoustics and language. And the way it is typically done uh, is to uh, uh, use a, uh, a collection which we call corpus in our, in our uh, jargon, of voice from different accents. Uh, so today we are, it, 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 it's, I, I think we are doing okay with that. Uh, can you talk about why we can't test Jibo's uh, voice in the SDK in the simulator right now? Sure. Uh, the reason why we can't do that is because uh, text-to-speech runs on the robot, and the robot has a particular version of Linux. Uh, it's an ARM Linux. So we developed our te text-to-speech product for that particular operating system. For us, uh, if we want to run that on the SDK, we will have to support text-to-speech uh, for all, all this, the, the platform. Like, in other words, Windows, Linux, and, and Mac OS. And we decided that for the time being, it's something that we, uh, we are not doing. Uh, we may do that in the future. There are no technological barriers to that, but we are not doing that now. Uh, we had a question from Dev Miser. Will there be any material differences between how Jibo listens and understands compared to popular virtual assistants already in the market? Uh, so we are all using, we are, we are using state-of-the-art uh, technology for, um, for Jibo. So uh, everything that you hear and you read in the, uh, uh, you know, in, in the science magazines and the technology magazines, 
like deep learning, deep neural network, uh, we are used there. So we make sure that our technology is the state of the art. Uh, I don't know exactly what other systems use, but I suspect that they use state of the art too. So we try to give the best possible technology to our uh, potential users. I know you, you touched on it a little bit, but can you elaborate on, on when exactly we've used voice actors in the past and for specifically yeah, okay. as it relates to the campaign video and now yeah. the new videos you see now and, and kind of how the voices have yeah. worked? So the campaign video, which is uh, probably almost four years old, you know, three and a half years old, was done, uh, was a real Jibo actually, it was not fake, uh, didn't have all the technology that we have today, so it was uh, uh, moved uh, by, uh, in a different way, and, uh, and the voice there were pre what we call pre-recorded prompts. So we use a voice actor, not over the movie, but actually Jibo responded with pre-recorded prompts. We had thousands of files of everything that Jibo could say at the time, and we took Jibo around um, in, in a road show for uh, BCs, and Jibo was working with that files. Uh, of course, that's not scalable because anytime we want to add a new prompt, a new a new sentence, you have to record uh, the voice talent, and uh, you don't know the voice talent is going to be there for us forever. So we needed to record a text to speech, and, and, and text to speech, as you, as you heard, uh, sounds different than a voice talent. But we got an opportunity to create the real voice of Jibo, the brand voice, something that we would like uh, people to remember Jibo uh, uh, with. Yeah, so that's the, the voice of Jibo. So those newer videos on the website now are the... the newer video on the website uh, use exactly DTS. Probably not the latest version, the one with emotions that I played for you is not there yet. But yes, it uses... They're not, they're not recorded by actors. So can you talk about why designing building for speech is challenging and real challenging aspects you can think of? Yeah, and that's not just because of Jibo. Designing for speech is challenging, period. Because, uh, uh, you know, you, it, it's, it's, it's a very uh, fine game between what you tell the user and what you expect from the user. Uh, about 15 years ago, or you know, more, I would say 20 years ago, the, uh, uh, the idea of voice user interface design came out uh, when the first uh, designer starting, uh, started to architect the uh, telephone-based customer care, hated by many people, of course. Uh, they press one or say one thing. Uh, but that required design. People started to realize that it's not enough to have good technology, but we, have, we need to have good design. So the way you ask a question, somehow, uh, determines what the person is going to say. If you ask open questions, everything is possible. The, the user can say pretty much anything. But if, if you uh, ask a specific question that requires a yes-no answer, you can expect a yes-no answer. So this uh, art is called voice user interface, and we have a number of voice user interface designers here that help us to build uh, uh, applications for Jibo. What are your three best practices for making speech successful on Jibo? Huh. <laughs> so, well, first of all, is try to understand how speech works. Uh, we have a documentation, try to understand what is the role of natural language understanding, what is the role of the speech recognizer, what is the role of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, hot word, and then try to be simple. Uh, don't try to make complicated um, speech understanding rules. You know, we don't speak. We speak simple also with, you know, with, with among us. You know, unless you have a, you give a speech on philosophy or on speech recognition, uh, when we interact in our everyday life, we ask very simple questions and we get simple answers. So try to be simple. And, and third, uh, you know, understand that the way you ask questions. That's what you, you get. But that's what you're gonna get from from users. So uh, try to think of the whole interaction or, or the whole uh, experience and and plan for that. Plan if you know what user knows, what user does, doesn't know. What is the context in where your skill is gonna work? And also try to understand that even 
even though speech recognition today is quite good, there are words that, that sound very similar. There are words that even us have, uh, uh, you know, uh, problems and you know discerning between, like like words like uh, and there are homonyms. So you have to be aware of that. Okay, we have another question from the community here. Uh, they they're asking about so. We've told them before that Jibo will be able to recognize 16, up to 16 members um, yeah. of, his, of his family, friends. Um, they're wondering, will he be able to respond to Hey Jibo and commands to people outside of that 16? Oh, yeah. It's going to be respond uh, to command, but it's not going to be recognizing the face and the voice of more than 16 people. Of course, this is a, 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 a decision and a restriction that we pose for uh, putting a, a upper bound on the memory and the uh, computational loads. Uh, it may or may not be uh, relaxed as we move ahead, uh, but Chibo will respond to anyone. Just if you have special commands, like for instance, I, you know, imagine you, you want to post a, a picture on Facebook or something, then you need to be registered to Chibo or uh, you need to, Chibo uh, needs to know you. We have any other questions coming in? So, what's difficult about TTS and NLU? What are the yeah. key differences relative to each other? Yeah, yeah. What is diff difficult? Okay, uh, TTS is difficult because uh, uh, you know it, it, it's a subjective technology. Um, I, I would say that SR for certain experts is not less difficult, but it's more clear what you have to do to improve speech recognition. And when I say SR, I mean automatic speech recognition. We talk by three-letter acronyms here, right? But uh, um, because there is a measure, an objective measure of, of quality for speech recognition, which is the word error rate. You know, how many word uh, my recognizer uh, uh, mistake mistakes for other words in. Uh, in 100 words, right? So 25%, 10%, 8%. In text to speech, there is no such a measure, unfortunately, because it's subjective. You take the same, same text to speech and you have three people listening to it and, and you get three different uh, opinions. Someone likes it, someone doesn't like it, and, and someone say, I don't know, I don't care. So that's a difficulty of TTS. Uh, pretty much the algorithms and the technologies are quite uh, uh, consolidated. They are pretty much recipes, and we kind of use the recipes and 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 create uh, the voice. But in order to tune it, to tweak it, in order to make it sound emotional, sound natural, and and please uh, the, uh, uh, the, the 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 users, that's a difficult part. Regarding natural language, natural language is very very difficult technology today, because uh, there is not you know a, a bound of what type of concepts uh, uh, people can express. You know, uh, understanding language is a very complex uh, thing, and even today there is not a general uh, theory of understanding all English. So we always need to understand portions, of what we call domains. So the command, Jibo commands, uh, questions about general questions that have an answer on Wikipedia, and things like that. But, uh, uh, it's, it's still something which is complex and the, both the technological and the technology community and the uh, scientific communities are still working hard to create a general theory of uh, understanding of, of full language. Okay, we have a question from uh, Michael Rodriguez here. In regards to how difficult it is to train phrase spotters, might Jibo one day be able to learn hot words without them being pre-programmed? Uh, say for simple common phrases like yes and no. Oh, yes, that, that's possible. Um, hi, Mike, uh, how are you? <laughs> uh, that's possible. Um, definitely, um, we, will have pre we will have a certain point pre-built yes, no, stop. Uh, Continual commands, the, the most you know, most common commands, uh, and uh, uh, you know, we, we are really, uh, we have a lot of innovation teams here, and after launch, we will have things that uh, we may do that will surprise you, 
but for now we're really focusing on the on making Jibo work for the launch. Let's see if we have any other questions coming in. How do you choose the factory rules? <laughs> factory rules? Oh, this is a very, very interesting question. I mean, some people here uh, read the manuals. <laughs> um, factory rules are those, uh, it, it try to get into account what we call named entities, which is a well known set of entities in every language and is a pretty much a finite, even large set. So we have uh, dates, natural numbers. Ordinal, cardinal numbers, we have uh, days of the week, uh, month of the year, you have uh, time intervals, uh, currencies, and so on. So this is the way uh, we choose. So when you have a large uh, number of, of elements belonging to a well-known category, uh, this is city names, for instance, or proper names also, uh, uh, factory rules. So these are um, candidates for factory rules, and we put them in the uh, um, Jibo. Follow-up question. Um, can we expect Jibo's NLU to improve as we speak with him over the months and years he's living with us, uh, both on the OTA update level and his own learning? Yeah, uh, that's something that uh, speech technology uh, does very well. So we uh, use uh, the transcription of uh, what people say in order to improve natural language rules. And we're not only one, everyone does that. You know, uh, every spoken language technology has to do that because uh, we need to take advantage of data. There is something, a, a, a mantra we have in speech technology is that there is no data like more data. So data is used to improve uh, uh, at, the, at the general level. Uh, it will in the future, so we have plans to have also individual learning uh, that doesn't require any, um, any, any back-end, so Jibo will be able to learn the, the words that people use uh, in, the, uh, in, in the family, or at least design the frequency of that, and then the, uh, 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 the, the pronunciation of that, but this is for um, um, after launch. Uh, another question, might, might the speech rule editor um, interface provide feedback about words or sounds that are not supported? Uh, we, don't, we don't do that now. That's a very, actually a very good suggestion. Uh, I'll put that in my notes. It's a very good suggestion. Techno technically, there is no problem. In, I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't say there's no problem. Technically, it's probably possible. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good, uh, very good suggestion. We'll take a couple more questions here. We'll give you guys a couple minutes to send in some new ones. We'll wrap it up then. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed answering questions, very thoughtful questions. Uh, and uh, I think we have a forum for uh, sending uh, questions after this web, uh, webcast. Uh, please don't hesitate to send questions. I'll be really happy to um, answer any question that you may have. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.